Hi, Neil Livingstone here. How are you going? All right, so it's uh, January 2023. Um, I'm in Sydney, Australia, and there's a view from my porch. It's a very rainy day, which is a shame because I, uh, I was going to go to the cricket. So it's been rained out. So I'm going to do a video instead. You can see uh, they've got the, the Pakistan-New Zealand game on because the so Sydney test has rained, rained out. So I think the number one problem that business owners are, are facing today, I, I hear this all the time, I'm no doubt that you do too, is I cannot find uh, good people. In fact, sometimes cannot find any people to hire uh, and I can't keep them either. In Australia, and I think around the world, this has particularly been the case since COVID uh, in Australia, where it, unemployment is at historic lows. I think it's at 3.4%. It's never been that low. Um, we haven't had any immigration uh, since COVID. And, um, you know, uh, I've got logistics clients that have large warehouses, cannot find forklift drivers, pick and packers. I've got uh, other clients that cannot find good sales people, good marketing people, good finance people. Uh, and I'm, it's the same in the hospitality sectors as well. So um, I thought today I'd just do a short video uh, and talk about the three parts to people. And that is the recruitment part, the onboarding part and the retention part. The first thing I'd say is that in my experience, uh, business owners uh, don't see that the key, the key reason why they struggle in this area is they just don't invest enough time uh, in these three areas of managing people, recruitment, onboarding, and retention. They're bad at it. Uh, and and they and they're bad at it mainly because they just don't invest the time that you need in this area. It, it's a time intensive area, people. It's probably the hardest part of almost every business, and you need to work at it continually. Um, so even in the good times when there are lots of available people, uh, lots of business owners struggle at recruitment, at onboarding, at retention, because. They just don't put enough time and money into investment into into their people. Um, so, um, let's talk about recruitment. I don't think the old way of recruiting, when you have a you know someone resigns or gets fired and you have a vacancy and you start the recruitment process, at that point. Uh, that's gone. That's not working today. You know, it may in the future, but you know, right now, what you need to be doing is running a continual recruitment process. You need to automate this process as much as you can. Obviously, the historic channels of Seek, and there are a few other online uh, channels as well, and obviously recruitment agents. Uh, but you need to get creative and broaden, and not rely always on those traditional channels. So. You know, you need to be using your email list. You need to uh, specifically go out there and say that you're hiring. You need to have that on clearly on your website. You need to do videos promoting, uh, you know, with with your team saying why it's so good, uh, why why you're so good to work with, and you need to really go out there and do outreach into the social media channels, using video, using emails. Um, you know, this is a uh, it's an employer employees market at the moment, and that means you you cannot sit on your laurels and use just the traditional channels. Um, everybody's doing that, and sometimes the best people you'll find uh, are not actively looking. But if they see that you're in the social media um, and you're hiring, it engages them. The next thing I'd say is. The best way to you know, make this as easy as possible is to have a really good reputation in your space, uh, a good brand name, uh, a good reputation uh, in your sector that uh, people that work in your sector 
uh, either for your competitors or or wherever, know that you are a good employer. You know they are. You are a good business. Um, so you you need to be building building your business, building your brand, working on getting eyeballs on your business from a branding and reputation point of view, not just a customer acquisition point of view. You know, if you're a, a Pricewaterhouse Coopers and you're operating in your space, you know, people know who you are, they know your reputation. Uh, if you're competing against them and you don't have that same reputation, uh, all other things being equal, the person's going to take their offer, not yours. So that is the number one thing that you need to get handled going forward, uh, and that will make employment, recruitment, onboarding, retention, while always, well, certainly at the moment, difficult, it's going to make it less difficult. So, yes, yeah, so run a continual recruitment campaign, uh, not just through traditional channels, but multi-channels. Um, and when you find a good person, even if you don't have a vacancy in, that uh, matches them, hire them. Good people pay for themselves. And what happens is when you bring good people on, you can do one of two things. You can make space for them by clearing out a non-performer or invest in that person, you know, until, until uh, they pay for themselves, which... If they're good, it won't be very long. Um, next thing in relation to recruitment is let's talk about the number one attri attribute that I, I look for, and it's not relevant experience. A lot of people, or most people, focus on trying to find someone with relevant experience, experience in their sector or in their um, specialism, Look, that's great, but everyone's looking for those people. Those people uh, typically uh, are in demand uh, and you have to pay more for those sorts of people. Um, if you can get those people, fantastic. But I think nowadays it's even more important, in my humble opinion, to look for people that are action-orientated. Action is the, at the root of all business success. People that take action and take lots of action and repeated action um, are pretty much going to be successful at anything they do, even if they don't have the relevant experience. If you look at all of the really successful businesses like McDonald's, you know, PricewaterhouseCoopers, just to name a few, they typically recruit people with that attribute. Uh, and obviously, action-oriented people are proactive, self-motivated people. Uh, and they usually take them uh, relatively junior, or hire them relatively, not always, but as a rule, and then they train them. They invest the time, invest money in that person because they know if they are action oriented people and they're willing to learn, they can build a really good, winning, successful culture that has good people uh, at, at the foundation. Um, in my opinion, it only takes two weeks to work out where someone's going to work out because the, the only question or the key question that I always ask is, are they action orientated? Are they willing to learn? If the answer to both those questions is yes, then even if they don't have relevant experience and don't know what they're doing or they're taking the wrong actions, they're willing to learn. And, you, and, and the only ingredient that's missing is the management team and the business owners' uh, commitment to invest the time to train them and to get them up to where they need to be. Which, as I said before, I think is the number one reason why people struggle. They just don't do that or they're not willing to do that. The other thing I'd say is in relation to recruitment, the most important or one of the most important parts to the recruitment process is doing your reference checks. I just can't tell you how you know, how much I've learned that over the years. You need to get three references from people uh, that have been the direct bosses uh, of the person you're hiring. It's amazing how much you learn when you do three reference checks, both good and bad. Um, you know, I've had 
things come up in reference checks that either A, have made me not hire that person, or B, have an upfront conversation with that person and set the expectations around that problem uh, or issue or whatever it is that's come up in the reference check. Uh, and a lot of the times, a conversation that's all, is all that's required to, to, to get to, 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 to work, work through that. Okay, um, onboarding. Uh, as in your recruitment process, it should be as automated as possible. Um, you, know, you need to document an onboarding process. I think the first two weeks of someone coming into an organisation is, is so critical. Um, and you need to invest the time. Uh, someone needs to be sitting with the, your your new employee every day, not all day, but every day, for a lot of that day, or a good, good chunk of that day, and communicating with them, setting the expectations, teaching them, teaching them more than once. The more of this you have documented, uh, and I use video, uh, the better. Um, a lot of small businesses don't have uh, an automated onboarding process. That's okay, but you really have to put the time in in those first two weeks critical. Every day, that person needs to be briefed and have a training session at the start of every day for at least the first two weeks, in my opinion. And even better, more time during the day and at the end of the day to debrief as well. Okay, um, retention. There's a few key pieces to retention. The first thing you need to do is you need to pay, pay well. Um, good people pay for themselves, they really do. And I would not be penalizing paying your good people well. If you don't, they'll leave. I'd be paying everybody well and bringing people in as soon as you find a good person and that will give you an opportunity to either grow your business because you've got more people you can handle more customers or firing the non-performers and that means you're not paying non-performers well at the expense of not performing paying good performers badly so pay them well uh, it only takes two weeks to work out whether someone's action orientated if they're not going to work out make the hard decision, but pay them well, because if they're good, that's the key way you're gonna retain them. The other thing that's really important is, like I said before, if you've got a good reputation in the market and a good brand, you know people will want that on their CV uh, and that you'll attract them and also keep them. Uh, the best way to you know, keep a good person is to show them a pathway, a career progression, and the best way to do that um, is to be growing. If you are building your, growing your revenue, uh, that means that you're building your team and that person will have uh, promotion opportunities and career progression. So growing businesses always do better at retention. Training is also super important. This is probably the number one thing that a lot of businesses, particularly small and medium businesses, just do not do. Uh, training shows that you are committed to that person uh, and, and you're committed to making them better. Uh, and uh, it, it has a, a massive impact on retention. Communication is also key. I've talked about this already in relation to recruitment. Uh, you, you, need to, you need to talk to your team like they're human beings, treat them like human beings. Uh, listen to what they have to say, Communi communicate the message, you know, the big picture message, why are we doing this, why do we exist, what are we, what are we trying to achieve uh, as a business, as a team, uh, and, and where do you fit into that? And you need to tell that to people over and over and over again. You need to ask for feedback uh, as an employer from your people and you need to take it seriously and you need to take action uh, in relation to the feedback that you get to the extent that you can. Uh, 
if someone works for an organisation that they know that they, they, they get listened to and, and the company responds, uh, that makes a massive difference on retention. I think a good example of that is, you know, how companies have adapted for COVID. You know, some have done a lot better than others. The, f the last thing I would say in relation to uh, you know, retention, particularly for good people, is to educate them about money. Uh, talk to them about what they're trying to achieve in their lives with their money. Um, how do they accumulate wealth? How can you help them accumulate wealth or hit their goals? You know, they might have specific goals on their mortgage, property, um, you know, whatever it is. And I think you should give them training in relation to money. It's amazing how many people have a lot of misconceptions about how to be successful with money and to build wealth. And if you are an employer that takes an interest in that openly with them, invests in them, gives them the training that they need and tailors their remuneration you know, to help them, you know, hit those life and money goals, uh, you will really, no one does this, so you'll really stand out and you'll retain your team. All right. Hope that was thoughtful, provoking, uh, helpful. Speak soon.